A quick glance and you may think this is a sewing class, but it's not. The mission here is creating clothing and not just any type of clothing. Martha Hall is actually a PhD student in the Biomechanics and Movement Science program. We do wearable technology, we do different kinds of like devices and clothing with devices embedded in them, all to help kids with disabilities. One of those kids is 14-year-old Faith, who has cerebral palsy. Faith is participating in Hall's dissertation study to design unique genes that will ultimately help children with disabilities be more independent. Remember, point your toe. In the video, she's trying to put on an ordinary pair of jeans. As you can see, the video shows how challenging it can be for the teenager. Cerebral palsy in particular, uh, several of the children have, and that can look very different depending on the child and depending on the severity of the presentation. Um, but for a lot of the kids, it may be challenges with range of motion, so like you can't quite get your ankle pointed in order to get your foot through, the, through your pant leg. Children may also be challenged with closures like snaps, buttons, or zippers. Faith is seen here again doing a number of different exercises to help get a better understanding of her clothing needs. The dissertation project uh, is all about creating clothing for people um, who are a little bit older than the typical kids that we work with at the lab. So kids age 5 to 14, kind of when you start to care a little bit more about how you look and want to fit in with your peers a little bit more. Um, creating clothing that they can get easily in and out of on their own. Research for this type of clothing all takes place inside the Move to Learn Innovation Lab located on the University of Delaware's STAR campus. We've worked with children that have a broad range of disabilities. Um, we've, the most common one that I personally have worked with is called arthrogyposis, um, which means that the child um, means curvature of the joints, but the child is fine mentally, but they really have a difficult time lifting their arms up. So we've worked on creating devices that make it easier for them to put their hands in front of their face, which allows them to make connections with the outside world and when they're playing with things. According to Ben Greenspan, measuring movement is key. For some of the projects that we work on, the wearable technology is just trying to measure movement so we have a better understanding of how the child's actually moving in a natural environment, not just in a lab space. Grant money is definitely important to this lab. The National Science Foundation recently awarded money to also allow students to work on a smart compression garment that will hopefully translate into a user-controlled power exoskeleton. And that's on definitely the larger side of funding, but also it's really nice with this huge push for open source electronics, a lot of the sensors and microcontrollers and things of that nature that previously wouldn't have been affordable in years past are much, much more accessible to purchase on the internet now. Meanwhile, what goes on in this lab could eventually get the attention of some retail giants. Target has just recently started to be interested in designing um, are providing clothing for kids with special needs. So they just released um, a line of children for children with autism, so things that don't have tags um, that can irritate the skin or seams in places that could bother a child. Committee members on Hall's dissertation have developed a relationship with Target, so there may be some potential work in the near future. If we could um, help to create clothing for kids um, and have it distributed through an amazing company like Target that would just make it even more available and even more accessible, which at the end of the day is our goal.